Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If this is your first time passing through my channel, I do Tacky Tuesdays every single Tuesday. They're just short EMS cardiology lessons, usually six minutes and below. And today's lesson is going to be about premature junctional contractions, also known as PJCs. As always, I like to start off with a definition. So a premature junctional contraction or a premature junctional complex, also referred to as a PJC, are impulses that fire too early from the area between the atria and the ventricles, also known as the AV junction. PJCs tend to interrupt the underlying rhythm. We have done a video over PACs, which are premature atrial contractions, and we've also done a video over PVCs, which are premature ventricular contractions. So basically the difference between those and this one is is the area of the heart that it's coming from. So this one is specifically coming from the AV junction. And going into some of the characteristics of a PJC, the rate is gonna vary. It's just gonna depend on what the rate of the underlying rhythm is. The regularity is irregular. That PJC makes it irregular because the impulse is coming too early. The P wave is something very special and specific to the PJC, which typically it's not even there. It's either not present, it could be inverted or retrograde. It can actually come after the QRS complex, which isn't very common, but it can happen. Your PR interval, it's either not present because that P wave isn't present, inverted, or retrograde. And the QRS complex, they typically tend to be normal. The signs and symptoms of a PJC, most times patients are going to be asymptomatic, unless it's just constant PJCs or several PJCs in a row. But if they do have symptoms, they can present with palpitations, dizziness, sometimes hypotension, even syncopal episodes, and chest pain. The causes and risk factors for a PJC are cardiac surgeries, heart disease and heart failure, electrolyte imbalances, alcohol, tobacco, or different stimulants, even caffeine can cause a PJC, hypoxia, various medications like digoxin, sick sinus syndrome, and sepsis. And now that we know what to look for on a strip, let's take a look at a strip and see if you can identify where the PJC is. Taking a look at this strip, you'll notice that it definitely looks regular until you hit about that seventh beat. On the seventh beat, there is no P wave and it looks like it comes a bit too early. So that is going to be your PJC. Let's look into one more strip before we get into different EMS treatments of PJCs. And taking a look at this strip, once again, it looks like a regular rhythm until we hit about the sixth beat. And on the sixth beat, you'll look for your P wave and your QRS complex. And all of that is present, but the P wave is actually inverted and the impulse itself comes early. And looking at the possible EMS treatments, we're gonna get a 12 lead. That's how we're gonna know about the PJCs. We're going to obtain a set of vitals, administer oxygen, maybe get an IV, get a blood drop. It all kind of depends on how our patient is presenting. If our patient has a complaint of feeling like they're going to pass out or palpitations or maybe even chest pain, you need to follow whatever protocol you have in place for those complaints. And then you want to monitor for deterioration. If you start to see more frequent PJCs, several in a row, that sort of thing. And treat your patient's symptoms and treat their complaints. Like I said, if you have a living, breathing patient in front of you, ask them how they're feeling, ask them what's bothering them, get a really, really good medical history and search for underlying causes. Have they just had five cups of coffee? Are they under the influence of some kind of drug? drugs or alcohol. Anyway guys, pretty simple lesson today and I'll see you next week. Bye!